Grab some coffee, a Mountain Dew, maybe both. A storm is brewing, the Brainstorm. Welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Hey, welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Today, we're going to break down the legal industry from a marketing perspective. We're going to, Mike, Mike and I are really going to take how to properly market a law firm to a whole nother level for you. So let's talk about tactics, Mike. Um, I know that uh, that you've had some experience. Most people have had some experience uh, with the legal industry in some way, whether they were uh, uh, hired someone or whether or they're they, on the receiving or end. They're on the receiving <laughs> end, but uh, some way. But in our case, we're you know we've been in the marketing business, and we have a number of clients within the legal industry. And I'm sure there's people out there that want to know how do you continue to drive opportunity to that world if you are a marketing director for a law firm or if you're the owner of a boutique firm or if you're uh, you know responsible for the marketing advertising or driving opportunity to yourself as a, as a lawyer in that space let's just break that down what do you feel like is like first and foremost when it comes to marketing effectively marketing your law firm so I think first is recognizing where your talents ultimately lie what type of cases you want to actually handle. Okay. Because the way you position your marketing, your messaging, uh, the place that you promote it is going to attract a certain audience, yep. a certain type of case. Yep. And so you want to frame your messaging your, all the way from how your brand is represented, your your tagline, your logo, your color. Yeah, all your messaging, all your branding. How messaging. you shoot television commercials, if you're using television commercials, right. uh, what channels, again, you use, um, and... And really, you just you want your messaging to match the audience that you're trying to attract. And so, so as an as a as an example, if you are in a rural area, right, where there's a lot of recreational vehicles, hunting, fishing, so boating, right, um, four wheelers, four wheelers, things of that side nature, by maybe some dog bite stuff, right. So, if you're personal entry uh, and you live in a rural area, or you work in a rural area, or maybe even rural slash suburban. It, in that particular example, based off what you're saying, is you want to make sure that you are using your social media and your other messaging, image-wise, video-wise, things of that nature, to address the things that mostly look like the people who live and work around you. Yeah, I mean, so if you're if you're going to try and go after cases where there's four-wheeler accidents, uh, you don't want a city slicker Right, yeah, necessarily you don't want somebody living in their urban in, in, in all of your advertising because right. it, it doesn't match it doesn't connect with the audience and so you need to showcase that you are familiar with their daily life yeah. and their and their desires their challenges their pain um, and that you know how to help them resolve that pain as best as possible uh, from a legal perspective now um you you know what I really like about that is you never get what you don't ask for and so if you position yourself as an expert in whatever it is, right? And I know the expert's kind of a no-no when it comes to the legal field and marketing Don't perspective, say expert. right? But but if you position yourself as that, right, then that's the type of cases that you're going to get. You also want to be cautious that the fact is the opposite is just as true. You'll never get what you don't ask for. The key is, is you will always and only get what you ask for. And so if you say that you are you know, the motorcycle wreck attorney is an example, then over time people will know you as the motorcycle wreck attorney. And yeah. that would basically be because that is your brand all of a sudden. So you that better make be sure the it's the right niche you that you want to go after. Right. If you want to be the motorcycle accident attorney, you need to own that. You may need a, a larger market presence, a, a geographic area that you serve to give than more just cases. one small rural town, for right. instance. Right, right. Uh, you know, and so... I agree with that 100. percent And if you serve multiple types of, uh, you know, injury law, you know, scenarios, then you want content that speaks to each of those, and position yourself as a more well-rounded practice. Right. So, and there's but, a there's a strategic way of doing that. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm an attorney. And I handle everything." Yeah. Right. That well, if, that message doesn't resonate with people. If you confuse people, you lose people. Yeah. And so you have to be specific. They have to understand how you connect with them, how you can help them solve their challenge. All right. So the first thing uh, is building your message, like who you are, what are you going to concentrate in? 
and who you're going to be, right? All right, so now we've decided that, right? Whatever that is. And so once we've decided that, now how do we start to convey that message? Yeah, so some of that's going to depend on who that audience who is. Who that audience again, is, right. And how big of a footprint, you, you know, or radius you're going after. So, you know, a lot of attorneys would be willing to serve people, usually in their state. They might even be licensed in a couple of states. Mainly, mainly uh, their state and a lot of times really their backyard. Yeah. Like there's, made, let's just say that's a major their primary city. Business yeah, let's from. just say their major city, the major city that they are closest to. Well, that's what they're going to know. The, the court process right. locally, they're going to know or be familiar with the judges, the clerks. Right. The, how they work. Yeah. They're going to be familiar with the culture. The other attorneys in the market. The culture, the climate, the roadways. Right. Right, all that type of stuff. Right. So they're they're probably more effective locally, especially if it's a, a yeah. traffic accident. Right. Uh, you know, but there are some people who their niche takes them. I mean, maybe it's a certain type of, you know, business environment where there's accidents happening that they may be experts in that or expert like right. in that field. They have lots of experience in that field. Yeah. And so they may extend a, a wider, you know, geographic footprint because of that expertise with that type and of industry. And it being so niche. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so then what's going what's gonna happen is once you decided and make those types of decisions about what's your specialties, I guess right. you could say, and uh and then you create that then now you're crafting your message. Once you craft your message, now how do we get it out? And I think that one of the first places to start is the search engine. I mean, the search engine is very effective. It's the old phone book theory, right? You want to be where people are looking for you. Yeah. And in that industry, you absolutely want to be where people are looking for you because that's not something, especially in a personal injury perspective. Yeah, you don't kick the tires. You don't on kick that. the tires. You're not just researching. You don't have to be put down into some type of marketing funnel, if you will, to where it kind of nurtures you over months and months and months. Right. No, if you're injured and you have a personal injury claim or something of that nature, you want to get in touch with an attorney as soon as possible to have them start working that case. So what happens is you're scared. Most people are scared when that happens. Uh, they may be unable to go to work. Uh, they may not be able to pay their bills. Yeah, their normal is completely disrupted. They're, yeah, they're, if it's a vehicle accident, their car is trashed. I mean, there's lots of uh, anxiety, uh, obviously injuries, you know, physical injuries, and it gets expen- It can get really right. expensive. Right. Medical bills are piling up. Uh, electric bills do. Yep. Mortgages do. Yep. You know, cars, car payments do whatever, and they've got to take care of themselves, maybe their family. They're scared, and so they're looking for answers. And so they quickly look online yep. and if it's if it happened on a Saturday they want to pr- inform themselves as much as possible uh, and they hope to connect with someone as quickly as possible so having someone available to to at least take their information right immediately could be a real uh, difference maker yeah so in that particular case you could almost build l- l- let's let's just say you want to have four or five different practice areas l- let's just say you're a personal injury lawyer you want to have four or five different practice areas um, one might be boating, one might be dog bites, one might be, you know, an auto wreck or a car wreck, one might be a trucking accident or something of that nature. You want to build content pages specific and relative to those types of That's things. Right. Then you want to build ad groups from a paid search ad scenario mm-hmm. that's specific to those types of areas. And then you point those to those landing pages. And then, of course, you want, uh, you know, some tracking pixels on there. You want some... Uh, uh, call tracking phone numbers. And I know in that industry, you can't record a lot of industries. You can record the call for training purposes and so on and so forth. In that industry, you'd have to, I mean, you're the attorney that's listening to it. So you'd have to make those decisions if you're going to record the call or not. Uh, but you'd have tracking purposes just so you know what's working and what's not. And so you build those content areas to come to those landing pages. It's very specific and relative to that type of yeah, practice. And you go ahead and answer those first questions that are so that you know are commonly asked yeah. in the beginning stages of a, a situation. Right on that area. landing page. And then you have two, at least two calls to action, and you put those front and center where it's easy to see, um, and it's call someone now or request a, a consultation or a call back as, as soon as possible. And then if for whatever reason they're not yet ready to, to make that decision, you guide them further into the funnel and yeah. you try and capture 
their contact information. And these landing pages can be on your website or off your website. Well, mm-hmm. you know, what I like about off your website is there's no way to get those landing pages except through that particular type of advertising. That's right. You so know, you can track your performance. It is with much that easily measurable, right? Yeah. And so I like that. So you have, if you're looking, if you're looking at a search screen, a Google screen, you know, at the top you had the paid ads and then you go into the Google local, right? And so um, I think it's now called the three pack. Yeah. Uh, they've changed the name of that multiple times. And so right now it's the three pack, but now you can actually do a paid ad inside that in the legal industry, as, mm-hmm. you know, as well. You want to show up everywhere you can. And, and that works very, very well too. So the other thing is uh, making sure that you have quality reviews. Yep. Because one of the deciding factors with who someone is going to hire reviews are big is, is going to be what are, what are other people saying their experience reviews was. are big. And that can be challenging in the legal world because sometimes people don't want to yeah, naturally you, share. And if you don't get a favorable from response from the judge at no fault of the attorney, then um, somebody might leave you a bad review. Yep. And so, no fault of your own. So you got to address those. Yeah, you got to address those. And the key with that is you want to address those quickly and professionally and hope to take it offline, right? To hope to right. take it offline. Or in our particular case, we actually have widgets that help you scrub that stuff and keep yeah. keep that um, you know, that ineffective, especially ineffective review from hitting the public view to begin with. So yeah. uh, we can certainly help you with stuff like that, but you definitely reviews are vital. Reviews are very, very important. Right. And so, mm-hmm. and speaking of reviews, so we'll just dive, we'll just kind of go down that rabbit hole for a minute. Speaking of reviews, like right after a case is closed or right after a case is settled. I mean, in my opinion, it would be really good. And we put this into play multiple times, Mike, where you actually have a thank you video Mm -hmm. that's been shot coming from maybe your lawyer, or if you have a a, a, a team of lawyers, maybe it comes from the primary attorney from the firm, right? But it's a thank you video that goes out to the client, just thanking them for choosing you, Mm -hmm. right? It's simple, very professional, very customer service oriented. And it's just simply thanking them for choosing your law firm and allowing you to care for them, right? That's right. That is also a great time and a great place to say, if you will, please Give also please also go to here and provide the link right below the uh, below the video in the email and allow them to click through and give a review. Oh yeah. Right now and then. I mean, there's never a better time. They're yep. never going to be happier than they are right now because they just settled their case. That's right. And that's how you can build those positive reviews. Uh, you know, negative reviews are much easier to attract because people are want to vent right. their frustrations. And you're right, Matt, in that world, oftentimes it has nothing to do with the attorney. Uh, it's it's more about the outcome. The they're outcome, how the, how the consumer upset. is feeling, what their emotional state yeah. is. So the other thing that we find is it's important to continue to communicate with those folks uh, beyond uh, the, the event. Right. Uh, not that we hope they ever need your your services again in the future, right, right? But it's it's just a reality is people who have an experience oftentimes know other people who are going to have a similar experience in the future. And so, for instance, people who go hunting a lot and they have a four wheeler, mm-hmm. guess what? They know other people who go hunting a lot and have four wheelers. And it's amazing how word spreads and someone else gets injured and they go, "Well, remember." Ted had that accident three years ago right, and right. you should reach out to him. And now all of a sudden, because you've stayed in front of them and communicated with them through an ongoing communication. That's vital. That's vital. So now what you you're talking about is ongoing communication. You want to do that in an automated fashion, uh, such as email marketing. So we attracted them. We created our message. We know who we are. We know that we're going to specialize in the things that the people around us need the most, right? Based off a culture and geographic area and so on and so forth. They find us via pay-per-click type of ads and you want to have different ad groups for all of those or or Google My Business type of stuff. You also have, and then we talked about reviews. We talked about the importance of email marketing, ongoing communication. You also have SEO and and everybody talks about SEO because SEO has been a thing forever, right? It seems like. Um, and so, but how do you get there? I think one of the most important things to understand is you get there through production of content, more and more content, quality content, right. That speaks to the audience, build it for the audience first, the search engine second, recognize that a lot of people 
uh, today are more and more mm-hmm. using voice search. And so having conversation based or answer questions yeah. within the content to help it help you and build brand because I mean I, I did a so I did a quick uh, I did a quick search here Mike on, on on my laptop here while we were talking and I asked a question I said how how uh, what I don't even remember what I asked exactly but it was something like how fast should I contact an attorney after a car wreck right right and there's all types of like answers. answers to that that's a perfect example of some mm-hmm. content. Right, like yeah. that's a common question. Yeah, and so you want to produce comment uh, content that's specific to those types of things. Yeah, you want right? to add value immediately because again, they need answers. They yeah. they are nervous. They they don't know how to navigate this situation. They never, most of them, never thought they'd find themselves in this situation. And you want to be the one that adds value, provides them the information they need, so they can sleep a little better, and give them a plan. Uh, for them to move forward. And if How you can about, do that, you can you can then capture them and nurture them yeah, I love until that. they convert. So so that's the search engine, that's reviews, that's email marketing. Talk to me about social media. Yeah. So let's say let's continue to use the the idea that they went and searched. Uh, and, and of course social media can be used for many other things. Most people, even in times of of critical need, they still don't make split second decisions. Right. Well they're going to visit a few other Website and they're do, and do I even some, some of them might even be down and they even need an attorney. Yeah. So they're, right? they're still doing some due diligence because there's so much information out there available, like you just shared, Matt. So they want to go consume some of that. So they search, you spent dollars getting them to your sometimes lots of dollars landing page or to website. Get them to a or landing whatever. page or website. Maybe they didn't take an action. Maybe they didn't click the call. Maybe they didn't fill out a form. Maybe they didn't download a valuable resource that allowed you to capture their information and get them into your nurture campaigns to move them through the journey. But then they go over to Facebook or they go over to Instagram or they go over to Twitter. If you retarget them and have a message that shows up that reinforces what you were just sharing with them and continuing to provide value, then you re-engage them and now they begin to see you everywhere they turn. So then they go to YouTube to watch their favorite music video or whatever it is or mm-hmm. some yeah. four-wheeling video. Now they see you over there at YouTube And there's a pre-roll, pre-roll ad that and shows up. And it's all up. based off the retargeting pixels that was dropped in on the yeah. landing page or website. And what I really like that is you could customize those pixels and those ads, those retargeting ads, specific to whatever practice or service mm-hmm. that they were visiting, right? So if right. it's a dog bite, then they get served, continuously served dog bite responses or Q&As or things of that nature to help that particular person get past their situation. The, the idea is to continue to pull them back, continue to re-engage them and move them into your funnel. Right. So that way you can guide them through the journey to their first consult to then retain you for services right. if indeed you determine that's appropriate. The other thing that I'll say about social media is you know, I'll, I'll m- mention uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is great, especially if you're trying to reach uh, other professionals. And so as an attorney, if you have a niche that you're in that uh, oftentimes other attorneys don't want to necessarily take on those cases because maybe they just have some complexities they're not accustomed to, and you get referrals from other attorneys, you can begin to build your brand to other attorneys who could be your referral Absolutely, partners. Absolutely, because they might not specialize in that. In, that, in that field. You know, and, but a lot of attorneys, Mike, are already running television commercials mm-hmm. and radio commercials and billboards. And, and one thing that I can speak to that, I don't need, uh, you know, there's some, a lot of things we can go into those things, right? We, we can dive deep into every single one of those tactics. Do they work? Do they not work? And so on and so forth. The one key component, well, I'm probably give you multiple keys. One, one key component, Mike, is that when you create the strategy, you want to make sure that you're going to maximize the result from that strategy. And if you put all your money online, that's going to return you more than if you put all your money offline. But what's going to return you the most on your investment is when you have a really good comprehensive uh, strategy that takes in effect all of those types of mediums, right? Those advertising vehicles. Mm -hmm. The key is, is let's say you run television commercials, but how do you measure a television commercial. I know we've had the same question asked uh, and it's pretty simple. Basically what's going to happen is you're going to create the same thing we were just talking about in a digital world 
let's say dog bites or let's say boating accidents, right? Let's use boating accidents um, because there's a lot of pet owners out there that just absolutely eat up some attorney dog bite ads. I can tell you that, man. But let's just talk about boating accidents. And so let's say you put out a bunch of content for boating accidents, you create a landing page, and you might actually buy a domain name that's called your boating accident lawyer.com, right? And you push that out on Facebook, you push that out in a search engine, and then you start dropping. And, and then if you want to put that out just on television, then you know how effective television is because the only way you're coming to that landing page or that particular domain name is because you saw that television ad. Right. Then you have traffic. You could have the same. You could have the same aesthetic look of a landing page right. 14 times and use 14 channels to drive to an identical landing different page. Different domain just, names. And, just you find it through different ways and you right. wouldn't know it unless you went through that specific channel. Right. And that can help you clearly identify from a direct response activity yeah. how you got them there. The reality is there's two types of advertising, really. There's direct response, and that's, hey, I want to run an ad. I want to get a lead. Right. And then there's brand building. We know that those organizations that build brand, those law firms that build brand and invest in brand long term, win hands down. Long term, they are the winners. Significantly more no business doubt. than those who are trading dollars for leads today. But we also recognize that business has to be done today. And if you haven't yet had the longevity or you haven't done a the, the job you should have to build brand yet, then you can't just go on a brand building journey and and hope to survive you know, in the interim, right. you're going to need to have some direct response stuff to, to get some immediate customers in the door Yeah, that while makes you sense. build that brand. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, I mean, with things like billboards, you could do the same type of theory, but you can do things like digital rotators where you can get a lot more coverage geographically than just be in this one place, one time. I like digital rotators because another thing you can do is you can belt around your town or your city or your area um, by being all over the place. You can also change your message very quickly with digital boards versus static boards. Uh, you can change yeah, these it. Ain't, these ain't your granddaddy's billboards. Right, I mean, they change. And you've gotten so intelligent that you can do dynamic type of ads. So it can connect directly into the weather center and mm -hmm. tell you what the weather is. It can, it can actually connect straight into uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles and tell you if there's a wreck ahead. Isn't that crazy? On the billboard. I mean, yeah. it, so there's a lot of things that we can do uh, to help you really market effectively your business. But the key is, is making sure that you just have a good, strong message, like you were saying earlier, Mike, and you put together a comprehensive marketing strategy that takes all of that into yeah. effect in your area. Um, that omni-channel approach. Omni Use channel all approach. channels do possible it. to reach your audience, engage them, because they have lots of other messaging coming at them. There's lots of distractions out there. Right. And you're competing for their attention, uh, even if they're even beyond just for looking for legal services. Right. You're competing with every other marketer out there who's trying to gar grab their attention. And you need to, to be visible in as many places as possible, drive it home. And, and so when they think or need your service, all they can think of is you. Yeah, that's a good, powerful ending right there, Mike. I appreciate you spending some time with me just talking yeah, about fun. law firm marketing. We have a number of clients in that industry. If we can help you or your law firm in the future, please feel free to reach out. You can also hear us on the brainstormradio.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Watch our YouTube channel. Mike and I both own uh, Splash Omni Media Marketing and Digital, Digital and Traditional Marketing and Advertising Agency. We'll be happy to help you answer any questions that you have. Uh, even if you don't engage us, uh, we just love helping businesses grow. Thank you for listening to the brainstorm with Matt and Mike.